appreciate this opportunity to, uh, to discuss something that is dear to my heart. Uh, again, I'll give you some background on it and I'll be brief. This has taken three and a half years of my life in researching this, so <laughs> I'm not an expert, but it's three and a half years of ex uh, researching. And uh, as uh, Mark mentioned, I'm Gregory Newman, Associate Dean here at Auburn College of Workforce Technology. Presentation uh, agenda for today, we're going to take an introduction of edge computing and we're going to talk about the marketing drivers for edge computing and business value, mobile ed uh, edge computing uh, service scenarios. We'll go through some scenarios and we're going to take you through some deployment scenarios and we're going to talk about deployment of hybrid edge and cloud architecture and data center deployment examples and we'll conclude. So yeah, for those who are going to keep track of time, about 30 minutes, 33 minutes of the time spent in on the feedback. One of the things we want to uh, go through first is discussing what is edge computing. A lot of conversation and just basically when I did my research on edge computing started in 2017, there were very few articles uh, available. Uh, it wasn't a, it just was emerging technology. Now it's beginning to pick up. So the terminology edge computing is actually going to be mis miscommunicated, calling it fog computing. And it's also, it's mainly based on small cloud uh, computing, such as personal, private, enterprise cloud. While cloud computing is still the mainly the based on IT services and public cloud, FAW calculates its power, powerful in large quantities and emphasizes on the quantity. So in a sense, what is FAW computing? We're gonna, they're gonna start decoupling the cloud architect and making smaller, we call them micro uh, data centers. And these micro data centers are gonna be known as FOG. The FOG is the network that make up these data centers. And they're gonna be virtual. So the concept of virtualization and the concept of uh, the different type of VMs and NFFs, we're gonna talk about those as we progress. This is making up your FOG computing. What is the reason why we're decoupling the cloud? because we got to get processing closer to the infrastructure, as you see at the bottom here. These devices, which is basically making up an internet of things, millions and billions are connected. And in order to process them faster and to get processing faster, we're going to have to decouple and distribute. We, we centralize, we decentralize, we centralize again, now we're de de decentralized. So it's that on again, off again, to get processing closer to what? The end devices. This is what it's about. This is what edge computing is about. And it's a lot of technology. So when you look at FOG, you go back and look at Cisco's whole model. Their whole model now is moving away from that physical data center and moving more toward software-based data centers. What does that mean? Virtualization. How do you define data centers now? It's not gonna be that rack and stack. It's going to be also decoupling and, and distributing. And you've probably heard something with uh, uh, VMware has something what's called a B block. That's becoming more prevalent. They, based on the research, it's saying that if this is, the research is true, and then moving forward with this particular technology, by the year 2022, Chicago will require 80,000 micro data centers in order to process so many of these devices. Los Angeles, 90,000. New York, 100,000. And this is gonna open up a lot more opportunities, but it's gonna open up a lot more other issues. Because point A to point B, even if you have 5G networks, you still have to deal with processing. You can't build the processing on the small devices because the heat, uh, the, the cost, et cetera. So they're pushing the data center closer to the end user. This is what it pr pretty much looked like from a carry. Now, fall computing is another captivity notion that has been taken into consideration for the evolution of mobile networks. So when you look at mobile networks, they call them MEEs, mobile edge computing. There are sub uh, net, uh, categories of fog. They work hand in hand. So if you look here, SDN, another topic, software defined network, software defined data sense, software defined network. What does this mean? If you break open a Cisco router, you have the control plane and you have the data plane. That's physically in the router. 
Now they're removing the control plane and moving it into a more centralized. And the data plane is down at the bottom here and it's virtualized. Why do they do that? For they can automate, move data, bandwidth around. And the cloud computing uh, model is still gonna play a major role. It's just basically, it's gonna be basically decoupled. So at the bottom here, you see all the different types of connectivity into this particular cloud data center. And this is where you're gonna see in these small, it's also called SD MEC. You're gonna see your small data centers attached to what you call your, uh, your service provider cell towers. So if you look at that 5G network, within that 5G network, they're building small mobile data centers in order to process faster. What's the driver? It's always the business. As I tell my students, it's always about the business. The growth of mobile traffic and the pressure on costs are driving a need to implement several changes in order to maintain the quality of experience and generate revenue. It's about to generate revenue. So when you look at all these market drivers, you see the business side, faster, faster time to market, revenue, new markets. Uh, cloud is a part of it, the standard, you go over to many user use cases, you see all these different use cases. Healthcare is gonna take advantage of it. Retail, imagine if you have retail is able to process throughout the store, instead of that stationary uh, uh, cash register, you have someone walking around the store and just basically process. Or better yet, when you walk in the store, your mobile phone is able to scan and process and pay for the items you purchase. Accelerated videos, Augment reality, caching, all of these are what was really driving that business aside of the house and what pushing the need we'll call edge computing. Can we do it today? Yeah, but the new applications are coming out. They're very sensitive towards uh, for us, uh, uh, delays. They don't want the inner packet delay for traffic going across the data, uh, a data network no more than a couple of milliseconds. Very difficult to get that when you have that centralized cloud data center or data center. Some additional business values. I like to say this one is basically it's based on the mobile edge is offering an IT services in a RAN. If you're looking at RAN, what does that mean? It's a radio access network. That's basically your cellular network. And if you look here, this is basically where you see all these cellular towers that you see around your city. There's business opportunities, the internet of things, social internet, uh, you have developers, they're writing new applications, but you still have that centralized data center. Maybe it's on your premises. Maybe it's a cloud-based data center. And you have these smaller edge cloud data centers that are distributed. Going across that mobile network, and that mobile network can be a physical, can be 5G, can be a number. But the whole objective is, is to push the processing closer to what? The data and the applications. And if you can able to process faster, you're able to develop new markets. Estimated that this is going to impact the GDP throughout the world trillions of dollars because new applications, new processes, new opportunities are going to be able to create it. It's already happening in China. They're creating new applications that are faster strong. You have it also on your desktop. Look at the Microsoft browser. It's called Edge. Edge. Why? The browsers are even processing closer to the end users. It's all about speed. Once they open that market up, it's going to be more and more and more opportunities. This is an opportunity just to go into some of the use cases. Here you have a museum. Now, one example is just having an augment reality in that museum. You walk into your favorite museum. Well, it's, my favorites are the ones in Chicago. When I walk in, I like to see augment reality. That opportunity is very possible, quite possible, with the implementation of edge technology. Because if you look at this diagram here, here we have whatever I Wi-Fi, our cellular network, but we have what is called mobile edge computing server. That is for augment reality. It is to process. Now, inside of this server, it's not your traditional server where it's just going to be a huge box. It may be the size 
of a, you know, so in a closet, or it may be the size of a suitcase, but inside of there are processing, and it's all virtual. The network is virtual, the servers are virtual, the applications are virtual, everything is moving to that virtual model. You also probably heard some containerization, uh, Kubernetes, that's a driving factor for it too. So the new applications, new infrastructure is gonna really impact augment reality. It's gonna allow processing to take place where you can walk in a museum and get with your phone or your smart device and get that real time augment reality walking around. And it's gonna be processed local closer to the end user. And if objects need to be transmit, transmitted up toward the core data center, it'll go across the core network. So the objective here is to process it closer. So you still gotta push and build this infrastructure out it opens up some other areas of, of risk. Security becomes a major issue. How do you secure this? How do you guarantee physically secure it, transmitting it across the network, et cetera? We'll talk about that as we progress. Another opportunity, I, look, I really enjoyed this one. This was mobile edge uh, opportunity is basically looking at your uh, end users in the quality of experience that they're going to have with different types of applications if you go through the flight over here you have abc all these streaming real that's that suck up a lot of bandwidth requires real-time processing youtube all this is paid possible because guess what we're gonna have a mobile edge server closer to that brand uh cellular tower using LTE or maybe using 5G, maybe using Wi-Fi, whatever the connectivity, and it's gonna be able to process it faster. The weakness of TCP IP and running it across the network here is because of the delay. And everyone, if you don't understand the TCP IP architecture, it has a window. Where the larger the window, the more you, bits and bytes you can get through it. With this here, you can salvage TCP IP based applications because you're processing closer and you don't have to re-architect that application. This is gonna open up additional application and streaming opportunities on the internet. Again, another one of those business drivers. You have, them, you have the mobile edge server here, then you have your core network here, and it's video content that's being streamed. One who's already taken advantage of this is actually Netflix. They're actually, if you knew it, know, familiar with Netflix, and you understand how Netflix is able to take advantage of have certain type of videos th throughout, the inter their, throughout the world for that matter. They don't have it centralized in their data center. They have something called CDN. It's positioned on the edge. They're already doing it. This is gonna open it up for more to do it. It put pressure in multiple places. It gives opportunities. If you are writing code, application developers, et cetera, a lot of opportunities. And the next one, and this one basically deals with the Internet of Things. Now, the Internet of Things, the IoT devices, uh, it, it's going to generate a number of different types of messages across the telco network, and it requires gateways to aggregate the messages and ensure low latencies and security. This is all about creating that low latencies. So now, all these Internet of Things devices, anywhere from, you know, of course, you have your autonomous vehicles, you have your gaming, you have your, your smart homes. All those are actually coming onto our internet as of today. As of 2021, they're saying there's going to be additional 10 billion devices tied to, tied to the internet. So now we're pushing that edge data center closer to those devices. The process, application, visualization, verticals, new business opportunity. I will never tell them I see new business opportunity, I see new problems, many new problems. Security, the new protocols, new applications, all these are things that are still in the making. I mean, this edge cycle of pushing things and edge computing is still in the making of being e e evaluated. What is the best? There is no standards. It's ne negative of, among the telcos. The telcos in the United States compared to the telcos in Europe, everyone is, <laughs> is, is doing their own thing. Very difficult to get them in sync, to be consistent. So it's gonna be interesting in the next several years how all this plays out. But the core concept is, and still is gonna take place, pushing things closer to the edge. 
Next, this is the big one, autonomous vehicles. Uh, here living here in, in Texas, there is already tests on trucks, uh, large vehicles on autonomous vehicles. But with autonomous vehicles, this is basically connecting vehicles in a, in a rapid growing and continuous to, uh, to come in years. And it's about communication of these vehicles, whether they're communicating with roadside sensors, uh, different intent to, for safety, et cetera. Very important. Edge computing in the telco environment is gonna play a major role. You have this with some of your uh, Teslas. Tesla is the first generation, second generation type of car. It has intelligence built in, but the next generation of the cars is gonna be built in, but it's gonna require that the infrastructure is built out, not just the 5G network, but the infrastructure has to be built out in order to handle all of those sensors. So you have all these sensors inside the car, the stop signs and all the traffic signs that are gonna be depending on this technology. So with that capability, LTE type of networks and in being able to make sure that in a packet delay, when you packetize the net, uh, data and send it across the, the network, it's no more than 300 to 500 milliseconds or less. So you have to process it closer to the end user. Critical. Now, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not one of the ones who wanted to adopt jumping into a vehicle, I mean, a driverless car, because I understand some of this is still evolving, but it is happening today, they're testing it out. And this is one that really, I feel in the next several years is going to play a major role, especially around developing this component here in order to process, not just the actual uh, data for the cars, but also the mobile devices that may be interfacing with the vehicles, monitoring, signal lights, what type of technology? Virtualization, new code. What type of code are we talking about? Some of the code is basically a whole new different applications that are gonna be written that are still in, in the making. You're still gonna go across that core uh, provider network and it's gonna connect into the cloud network. So cloud and, and edge all still play a part. We're just decoupling the cl uh, cloud and getting it closer to the end user. Cloudlets, FOS, whatever you wanna call it. I want to bring this up because typically cloud data centers, this is a big place from a standpoint of how this is all going to play. Whether you Azure, uh, you're AWS, or you Google, you have these huge data centers around the country, around the world. And Azure, AWS, they have one, I know we teach it here at Colin, these data centers within these complexes, it's just not one data center. More or less multiple data centers, possibly three data centers that are interconnected, as you see here, through high speed fiber optics. That way they have high redundancies and they don't really go down. Off of those data centers, they're gonna start basically what? Decoupling and putting mobile data centers, small data centers that fits in the closet. And you can see here, mobile data center that maybe can even fit in the closet that can do processing. And across this data set is gonna connect it to either through LTE, uh, uh, 5G, or whatever type of network that's gonna connect it to. The same over this data center, if you see, you have the autonomous vehicles. This can be a cloud, uh, a cloud, mobile cloud data set to support autonomous vehicles and cameras and sensors. This is the vision that they're actually looking at, how to integrate uh, uh, edge computing along with the existing data center in place today and basically still uh, be able to process new applications, new technology. I bring this up because Microsoft is, is basically already started. One of the things Microsoft is actually, is basically building smaller, more compact, more mobile data centers around the world. They're not putting them on land. They're actually putting them off the coast. And someone asked me, why, why are they putting it off the coast? If you do the population in the United States, for, for that matter, most countries, most of the heavy population for its people are what? Closer to the coast. So they're actually just testing this, started testing this several, about two or three years ago. This particular uh, data center was in place for two years just to taste, test it out. If you crack open that, this particular cap capsule, you will see within that data center, many, many racks of just processing. What are they processing? Virtualize. 
It's all virtual. So they still have the racks for his network and connecting and switching, but actually the actually servers, those components are all virtual. And they're positioning them off the coast because they realize in order to get faster processing and start building some of the new applications, they got to get it closer to what? The population in the business. The next, edge computing and student readiness. How do we get our students ready for this? The reality, the students probably will never be able to, to actually work on something like a RAN network, let's say work for a carrier, but there's technologies that we can incorporate in our curriculum to get the students ready. They have to be able to program. Programming language is a must. Students are coming out now, they have to be able to write some type of code, whether it's Python, C++, I just put a number of them out. Most of all our programs here at college, all of our students, whatever program they're in, whether it's the cyber, whether it's networking, you have to be able to code. Networking, yes, you have to understand the concepts of routing. Because routing in the next, and when you start talking about it from a cloud and a virtual perspective, it is not the traditional routing as you see in the Cisco lab, physical routers. It is all based on virtual. They want you to understand how routing actually works from one uh, uh, network to another. How does this actually get? TCP IP protocol will still be a player, but they're gonna modify it. They're talking about new protocols off of it in order to take advantage of what? Edge computing, VPN, Wi-Fi, cellular service, LTE, et cetera. Yes, these are, these are networking concepts and courses that we can bring to our students to prepare them. Virtualization is a must. Whichever platform you're using, well, there's a VMware, um, Hyper-V, students have to understand virtualization, VM. You have to take it to the next level. Students have to understand virtual networks functions, VNFs. What is that? That's your virtual router, virtual switch, virtual firewall. All of those concepts are gonna play a role. Security, I just put a few here. SSL certificate, encryption, multi-factor authentication. Security is gonna be a major one. Uh, issue. It's not just this actually securing the actual applications in the network. It's also physical secure. How do you se physically secure these, these environments? Because you may put an edge a data center, small edge mobile data center in a bus station or in a football stadium. How do you protect it? How do you secure it? Storage is going to play a major role. You got to understand the different types of storage cards. Uh, 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 environments. Whether it's object-based, which is basically you, if you relate that to a cloud provider, it's S3 for AWS uh, or Block for Microsoft. Or you can, uh, or Block storage. Block storage is your traditional SAN-based storage. Because a uh, lots and lots of data is going to be stored. Where that data is stored, it depends on what application and it can impact the cost. And last but not least, certainly, is cloud computing. It is a major uh, our students are going to have to have a good foundation of cloud computing. Just a few published articles and dissertations that are more than welcome to take advantage of. I found these articles back in 2008 when I was researching in 2018. Uh, I have written my dissertation, completed my dissertation that's out on ProQuest, factors that are affecting the slow adoption of edge computing in the United States. More than welcome to read it. Uh, I'll tell you up front, Halfway, to, after three and a half years researching it, uh, it, it may be uh, some uh, uh, subjects in there that's outdated. Again, uh, it's just to get through it is, was, was a challenge, so you're more than welcome to give feedback needed. But these articles are really what helped me. There weren't a lot of articles when I started this research in 2017. Now there are a number of articles, different articles, that are going in different directions. Any questions?